Well, hello and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for September 27th, the day of the ambiguous hero. And here at the top of the page is a visual representation for the day of the ambiguous hero. Well, we have us a picture of, boom, it looks like a big old horse blanket. That's right, but maybe or more aptly, it's a uh, horse armor, who's to say? That kind of padding they would wear for the joust. I don't know, I'm not an equine expert, especially not on the wardrobe. So who's to say? But in any event, hey, maybe uh, maybe we'll make some connotations as to why they put that as the image as we get on with the reading. Uh, but what's more important here is it's September 27th, and so it's somebody's birthday out there. And because of that, I just want to extend you a heartfelt happy birthday. That's right. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And if this finds you a little late, perhaps a day or two, or maybe uh, you know, weeks, months uh, after the fact, well, I hope you had a happy birthday. That's right. In any event, hey, if there's anyone else joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate September 27th birthday, I want to say hello and welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before we dive in with the redirect, real quick, like, I want to roll some dice. That's right. This is the Diecast All Birthday Broadcast, so we like to live up to the namesake around these here parts by a rolling dice. But more importantly, we do it for synchronicity's sake. That's right. And here we roll us. A one and a four, four, five. That's right. So some of you may be wondering what synchronicity is, and I'll just try and break it down best I know real quick. Uh, it's you getting out in the world and letting the universe show you it's with you on your path. And you just do that by looking for your numbers. That's right. Now you can roll your own if you like. It's preferable you bring some dice with you so you can ascribe, I don't know, directional uh, values to certain number sets or whatever so you know where to go and all that. But uh, the intention's here for you. So you're one and you're four for a five. But you get out there and you just keep your eyes open for your numbers. And when you spy them, well, you chase after them with a hunger. That's right. It could be something as simple as the number five bus pulls up or it's up there on the corner. So chase it down. But hey, maybe you missed the number five bus. Hey, that's okay. All right. Just the universe's way of showing you to take a moment compose yourself and maybe roll your dice. Figure out which direction to go and then roll your dice again to find out a how long. And then once you get to the end of both of the, uh, that time uh, limit down that street you were supposed to go, can look, collect yourself again. That's right. And hey, maybe you notice the, the, the store right ahead of you has an address. and Maybe it's a number five in there. Or maybe it's a, a 14. Who's to say, well, you know what? Go on in there. Maybe it's a store you wouldn't otherwise find yourself in. But you know what? This is synchronicity time, all right? So you go on in, and the person asks, how can I help you? And you say, you know what? I'm just, just tell them. You're there for synchronicity. It's your birthday. Hopefully they wish you happy birthday, right? But uh, more importantly, maybe they just want to know what synchronicity is all about. And you show them this video, maybe, who's to say? But you know what? Maybe, just maybe, they think it's a little more interesting to join you. And they close up shop, and they head on out. And maybe you just made you a new friend. And you know what? Synchronicity is all about that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be big, grandiose uh, events that happen, just little things that line up. And hey, maybe when you leave the store, there's a guy on a horse. Who's to know? It can set up themes for you, too. You just got to be eagle-eyed for it all. But in any event, hey, that's synchronicity in a nutshell as far as I understand it. So let's get on with your birthday read, all right? Yeah, your, your month is September, your day the 27th, if you didn't know. And your sign is 3 to 5 degrees Libra of the Libra 1 period specifically. And your quality and element is a cardinal air. September 27th, the day of the ambiguous hero. September 27th people are taken up with the puzzling and paradoxical nature of life. And at first glance, they would seem to be outgoing and generally normal enough. But the deeper one digs into their personalities, the more hidden foibles one uncovers. September 27, people usually function very well in real terms or in the eyes of others, but may nonetheless be plagued by doubts or insecurities. Perhaps this comes as a result of expecting too much of themselves, and in their quest for perfection, they have a tendency to play the hero or the martyr, it says in parentheticals, may grow depressed over their inability to completely live up to the impossibly high goals they have set. 
And if those born on this day could lower their standards a bit or be more accepting of their human failings, they would indeed be much happier or perhaps also less exceptional. Failure and success are constant and alternating themes in the lives of September 27 people. Because of their fear of failure and insecurity at a deep level about their natural abilities, they are driven to succeed. Unfortunately, they are not driven to success because they desire it or believe it would suit them, but because they allow themselves no other option. And for this reason, it would not do to call them ambiguous at all or it's ambitious rather, <laughs> it would not do to call them ambitious at all, though such, uh, such might well appear to be the case. Similarly, September 27 people often live an emotionally closed life, not due to coldness or love of isolation, but simply because their direction, the direction rather, their life or work takes leaves them no other choice. Highly sensitive individuals, those born on this day, would like nothing better than to work in peace and sharpen their skills, but often find themselves in walks of life peopled by harder, less forgiving souls. And consequently, they can have ambiguous feelings toward their career and the direction they have chosen, regardless of their degree of success. Slumps and depressions are not at all uncommon. And during these times, September 27, people may need the support of a good friend, family member, or counselor to remind them of how they are valued and help them to be more at peace with themselves. And those born on this uh, day rather, uh, generally possess great versatility and enjoy exploring all aspects of their work and related pursuits, and they are highly appreciative of by nature and like to be appreciated themselves. Hard workers, they operate well under pressure and usually possess a large measure of professional cool. And too often this detachment, which they practice never-endingly in their professional life, becomes an obstruction to their private life. And those born on September 27 would thus do well to examine how their career may be shaping their nature. Well, hey, how about that for a birthday breakdown? A little bit down in the dumps by my take. And uh, I got a little bit overzealous with my read there, so I fumbled myself. Hey, you know what? We can do that, all right? This is one shot, one take. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. I just need to slow myself down a hair, all right? So, hey, what did I have to say about your birthday breakdown, all right? I, I, I deviated a little bit on this thing here, so I'll be ready. I just wanted to kind of bring it back up, if you like. So uh, let's dive into what I had to say, my commentary, if you like. Taken up with the puzzling and paradoxical nature of life and outgoing and generally normal enough <laughs> geez if that doesn't get you primed to be excited about life or nothing will generally normal enough but in all honesty though uh normal is in reality relative right but in this book it's fleeting or an anomaly so you know what take that for what it is it's just uh it's just copy right yeah that's right that said the reading conveys your own anomaly anomalies right Hidden foibles, they call them. Uh, and the first, uh, you know, doubts and insecurities, they says. Well, hi, welcome to the club. Long time member, first time caller, all right? So, uh, hey, don't put too much uh, credence into that. But it's good to know. If we hear it, sometimes uh, it just takes one more time to hear it, even though we might have heard it 100,000 100, times before. You know, that's a large number, but, you know, so, say maybe a thousand times before. That, there's that one time that it sinks in, right? Uh, in any event, uh, you're, you having that perfectionist attribute, I suppose it's easy enough to imagine how uh, what seems like low-hanging fruit or picking out insecurities, well, it might, be, it might take on and be a pretty stifling handicap in your case. Uh, so it might be an apt word as I could see it paralyzing someone in a lot of ways uh, or crippling you in that respect or hobbling you in horse terms there, all right? Uh, you know, it would do so much to your ability to function. Um, that being said, uh, maybe it's horse armor ostensibly. There you go. Against the arrows of insecurity. 
uh, though insecurity comes from inside, so it either protects the horse from its September 27th rider or the rider from uh, what's erupting from the horse, if it's meant to symbolize you as the horse, right? Uh, which leads me to wonder if astrology affects every organism's personality. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what did you see? I'm getting off. That was my tangent here, and I lost my place. Uh, oh, yeah. I'd argue it should even go down past paramecium's, right? Paramecium's with paralyzing insecurity, right? That's an interesting thought. Uh, anyway, now, to get back on point, I totally screwed up my diversion. It's supposed to be seamless, but hey. Embrace your failures, right? I like this idea that you fight all of this by allowing yourself no other option but to succeed, all right? And it stands to reason a feeling of indifference might carry over to all parts of your life if you're approaching life in this way. So be mindful of that too, all right? Uh, you kind of just lose a little bit of the context. If you're just driving forward, driving forward, and you're just losing any kind of semblance of meaning of what you've accomplished and the value that it holds. So take a minute to compose yourself, right? And see what you're actually doing, I'd say. But you've also got a function, right? So uh, I'd say carve out some time to reconcile these things, just maybe in earnest, all right? Um, it's worthwhile to be able to find your joy in your success. And it's also okay to feel failure, all right? What else do I have to say here? On the second page, I carried over for you. But I say, uh, you know, try to find a way of exploring all this maybe outside the professional life so it doesn't interfere, all right? And maybe apply the success model to realizing as much. You are going to succeed in figuring this out. That's right. No option but success. Um, so any of it. Hey, I hope you don't mind the uh, the deviation. Um, I was trying to think of a way to, to try to bring up the, the more seemingly negative reads because they, they happen once in a while. And this one to me, if if I was in your shoes getting this read, I'd, I'd be a little bit of a sad sack myself, I think. Like my dad's was particularly sad sack. And so it was just, but it really spoke to him, at least from the outside view. He didn't think it applied at all. But hey, so maybe you're in the same situation. I don't know. But in any event, let's move on to your numbers and planets. Enough drilling down on what's a negative. We got to be ha glass half full now, don't we? All right. Numbers and planets. Those born on the 27th of the month are ruled by the number nine as two plus seven equals nine. And by the planet Mars. And the number nine is powerful in its influence on other numbers. Any number added to 9 yields that number, e.g. 5 plus 9 equals 14 and 4 plus 1 equals 5. And any number multiplied by 9 yields a 9, e.g. 9 times 5 is 45 and 4 plus 5 equals 9. Let's see. Uh, and the ability of September 27 people to influence those around them is similarly enhanced. And the planet Mars is forceful and aggressive, embodying male energy. However, interestingly enough, this energy is offset by the more social and receptive Venetian energy granted by the sign of Libra. And thus, the masculine and feminine sides of September 27 can be quite well balanced, all right? And such a combination also lends a large measure, you might like this one, of sex appeal. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Hey, so what I say about your numbers and your planets. All right, the number nine and Mars for that God of War like energy and the enhancement of your influence on the people around you. All right, the reading claims the Venetian uh, rulership offsets this Mars energy, however, um, which I'd argue is good. Hey, you, know, you want that balance and the harmony in your life. And if you don't feel like you have it, well, you just have it on your side. You just got to find it. That's right. At least that's what I would argue. All right. And who doesn't want even just a little bit of sex appeal? That's right. Paramecians could certainly use all that they can get, despite being asexual that's right <laughs> so it's only gonna further your influence i'd say so try leaning into it i don't know at least in earnest or you know what's it gonna hurt you might fail but guess what you gotta feel some of that failure once in a while i would argue i do it all the time as you have seen all right let's move on 
to your tarot. That's right, one of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical philosophies, ideologies, whatever you may like to call it. But it's here in the book, it's fun, see what it has to say, maybe expand our horizons. We don't have to, you know, believe in it if you don't want to. Um, you know, the tarot deck used to just be like any other regular card deck until people ascribed some meaning. And so a lot of people say it's not worth anything, but maybe they haven't heard of a consensus realities. Enough people believing in one thing is argued to manifest. Who's to say? That's a lofty idea too. But let's dive into your tarot. Enough of me uh, waxing poetic on it. The ninth card of the major arcana is the hermit, who is usually depicted walking with a lantern and a stick. And he represents meditation, isolation, and quietude. The card also signifies crystallized wisdom and practiced discipline. The hermit is a taskmaster who motivates conscience and conscience rather and guides others on their path. The positive aspects of this card are stick to itiveness, purpose, profundity, and concentration. Negative qualities include dogmatism, intolerance, mistrust, and discouragement. September 27, people should also be aware of the hermit's isolationist tendencies. All right, there's your tarot. Uh, they personalized it just a hair, uh, but let me try to pick up the weight there. Let's see, the hermit for that crystallized wisdom and practiced discipline, motivating others and guiding them on their path, ostensibly because you laid one down already. That's right. You laid, you already tread the path for others to follow. All right. So realize your value, I'd argue, even if your inclination is to deny it. There's a difference between modesty and apathy. All right. So lean into modesty, I say. All right. And learn to take a compliment. I know it's hard sometimes. I'm guilty of it myself. But learn to take a compliment. I think that's all I had to write. Yes, it is. So let's move on to your health. All right, your health. Those born on September 27th usually take an active interest in exercise, diet, and health concerns and are therefore open to suggestions for improving their health even if they do not literally adopt them. A wide variety of activities may appeal to them, from aerobics to competitive sports to martial arts or yoga. A little companionship in these activities helps a great deal. Swimming and walking are also highly recommended. On September 27, people must be generally careful of all types of internal difficulties with the kidneys, as well as reproductive and eliminative organs. All right. There's your health. Uh, this one was pretty concise uh, and uh, concerning all the rest of the uh, health ones, but I think it was highly individualized, and I've read a lot of these, so take that for what it's worth. All right, what did I have to say here? Open to diet and health concerns and suggestions. Hey, awesome, all right? Now, uh, if we can just shift that over to your mental health and psychological well-being. Assuming the insecurities thing is a reality. And then I would say the circle would be complete. But if you don't have that issue, then bam, circle's complete. That's right. The Ouroboros, snake eating its own tail. Probably doesn't apply, but yeah, I thought I'd throw it in there. Why not? Uh, let's see. What else do they say here? Companionship in said activities. They say that helps. I would, I would agree with that. Um, and walks and swimming also get a nod. And I would say ostensibly to help you cook up your ideas to succeed that's right and then the showers that follow i have some of my best ideas in the shower so you always have that to look forward to uh the kidneys and digestive organs get a mention and that's probably considering they're a libra body area they've been pretty consistent about listing the kidneys with uh, the past few days since libra started so perhaps be mindful uh what else did i have to say about that um nice rounded entry all things considered I do think so. I said that earlier. Anyway, hey, that's been your health. So let's move on to some advice. Even though we've drilled down and been pretty heavy handed with it already. What did they have to say? Try not to withdraw into your shell too much. All right. And learn to be more trusting and accepting. Have faith in your natural abilities. And we all make mistakes. That's why we're human. 
And what are you afraid of? It says with a question mark. Happiness is available even for you too, if you can stand it. That's right. All right. What I have to say about your advice. Man, I like this one. What can I say? And it was real quick in and out. Um, here's your advice. Don't withdraw or isolate too much. All right. Also mentioned in the tarot, the old hermit there. Have faith in your abilities. You're human and make mistakes. Yes, exactly. And I'd say that's why I mentioned it. Uh, allow yourself to feel failure. Happiness is available if you can stand it, like they said. I love this, you know, because happiness is its own can of worms also, right? Once you find it, you're like, oh, I'm loving life. But then all of the other things are come in with it, right? You can't anticipate those. That's right. Sometimes you just wish, oh, I wish back for the days when I was struggling. <laughs> and if any, let's move on to your meditation. I'll try to get the energy down just a hair for you. All right, here we go. And I like this one. I like it. A Navajo blanket traditionally contains an imperfection. Ooh, I did not know that. Or maybe I did, but I forgot. A Navajo blanket traditionally contains an imperfection. All right. Hey, I got my own take on that, but this is your meditation, your birthday. So I'm not going to try to skew it or twist it or spin doctor you on it. All right. It's just for you to figure out. A Navajo blanket traditionally contains an imperfection. All right. That's been your meditation. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. All right. That's right. Your strengths, mm, you're hard driving, you're successful, and you're cool. All right. And your weaknesses. Are you ready? Your weaknesses. Oversensitive, insecure, and withdrawn. We knew all those. We addressed all those. You got it. Don't be afraid to fail. You got this. All right. Those have been your strengths and your weaknesses. Let's move on to those born on this day and find out who shares your company. And with those born on this day, I like to examine something I find important. And that is finding your passion. You know, hopefully you found it, but I've found in many cases, most folks don't even know what it is. And you know what? With good reason. We just don't have the time to put in the work to figure that out. And if we do know what our passion is, we haven't figured out how to make money with it. Um, so I find it's a great opportunity to not only find out who shares your uh, company there, but to see what put them in, in the book there. What, you know, what, how they put their stamp on the cultural zeitgeist, if you like. And maybe you can drive some inspiration either if you don't have one or if you can't figure out how to apply it. So let's dive in with those born on this day. We start off with Samuel Adams, all right, the American Revolutionary Boston Tea Party leader. He was also the Stamp Act agitator and Massachusetts governor, and uh, they named a beer after him there, ostensibly. Uh, we also have Bud Powell, jazz pianist and a bebop innovator and a composer, and he died in Paris at the age of 42. We also have Arthur Penn, TV stage film director of Bonnie and Clyde and Little Big Man. We also have Louis Botha or Louis Botha, not quite sure, a South African prime minister. We also have Mike Schmidt, the Philadelphia Phillies third baseman, eight-time uh, National League home run leader, and a three-time MVP perennial a gold Glover, it says. Seventh all-time home runs. Kathy Whitworth, um, golf champion, a seven-time LPGA Player of the Year. That's right. She didn't let insecurity get in her way. Or she just found that success. Who's to say? Six major tournament wins to her name. We got William Conrad, the TV actor of Cannon and Jake and the Fat Man. who was also a director and a producer. We have Joel Shapiro, a sculptor, Red Rodney, a jazz bebop, trumpeter, and band leader. The jazz guys and women always have the coolest names. Red Rodney, uh, Vittorio Mussolini, uh, the Italian jazz critic and the older son of Benito Mussolini, and the brother of the youngest from yesterday. What was his name? Uh, Romano. They were born two days apart there. Uh, who else we got here? Just interesting little tidbit there. Uh, Miklos, or uh, oh, is, this a, is this a Greek name? I'm bad with those. Miklos Jansko, a theater film director of The Roundup. Barbara Hauer, TV journalist. Uh, Louis, or Louis, 
uh, Och and Kloss, a short story writer, critic novelist of powers of attorney, and a pseudonym, Andrew Lee, the House of the Prophet. That's what he wrote under the pseudonym, I'm, I'm assuming. We have Heather Watts, a ballet dancer. We also have Meatloaf, the singer-songwriter. They don't have his real name in there, even though they got the pen name of the other guy. Come on. Samuel S. Stratton, U.S. congressman and New York, of New York, rather. Uh, Vincent Yeomans, songwriter. Cleo de Mirode, um, French dancer. French name, give me two. We have Jacques uh, Thubaud, a French violinist. Cyril Scott, a composer, writer, occultist health and medicine writer and i messed up a few names there i butchered them if you like so let's do some butchering it's not done out of malice it's just hooked on phonics doesn't work for me with the pronunciation and sounding out the names there in a lot of cases in any event that's been those born on this day and that essentially rounds out your birthday reading except to say your season is fall your sign once again is libra of the libra one period specifically and your quality and element is cardinal air and this has been september 27th the day of the ambiguous hero from the secret language of birthdays by gary goldschneider and used elfers i have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking up a copy and letting it grace your coffee table you know they said you like to stay in the house so maybe when you do effort to have that company over you got something to break the ice either for the conversation or for all them drinks considering it's uh, girth <laughs> that being said that's not what's important here what's important here is it's somebody's birthday and so with that being said i just want to say once again happy birthday and like i said if this finds you late Hope you had a happy birthday. But for everyone else who just joined us to celebrate, hey, hope you enjoyed yourself and you join us for your birthday read. And lest we forget your daily numbers. That's right. Get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. All right, folks. You take care of yourselves and happy birthday. <laughs>